Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We have Colin Steingard. Yeah, all the way from Canada. Canada in the house represent Toronto, right? Hey. Uh, just north of Toronto. Just north Three of white north. Hey. <laughs> 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 Gotta get that accent in there, Colin. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, Colin, we met Colin at Adventure, Adventure. back mm-hmm. in May. He was in at Colorado. The, he was attending the workshop mm-hmm. that we were, we were that White and Reverie put together. Yep. And um, yeah, thank you for uh, hopping on the podcast today, Colin. Thank you. I'm this sure. Is exciting. Never, I'm sure never you have, been on a podcast before. Oh, this is your first. This is his first <laughs> podcast. All right. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure here. No pressure. <laughs> this is a no pressure zone. So can you tell okay. everyone who who do, who doesn't know who you are, who you are, what you do, what you do. Um, yeah, I'm Colin Steingard. I'm from a small town north of Toronto, um, just like about an hour away. So I service usually all of the Toronto area. Um, I am a creator. Um, and I like saying that instead of necessarily just a photographer or filmmaker. Um, I just like to make stuff. Nice. Yeah. And I've kind of been able to do it for a living. Um, and that's pretty cool. That's awesome. That is super cool. And he's being super humble right now. Because yeah. Colin <laughs> definitely <laughs> just produced the super dope NHL like documentary. documentary. And I thought Carrick. it was amazing. I showed all my friends and they were like, dude, this thing is sick. Like I, yeah. I, I was just forwarding it, it to people. It should be on like Netflix. Like it is It should great definitely be quality. Yeah, a lot for more. For sure. No, for real. Like I was like, man. Is this awesome. is the dude I just met at Adventure and mm-hmm. like he's over here producing content for you know NHL players I'm like man that's freaking awesome but yeah, yeah definitely creative for sure and I like that you said that mm-hmm. you're creative and not just a wedding filmmaker or photographer because yeah. I'm the Wait. same way I like to create whether it's like I used to do stencil graffiti like back mm-hmm. in the day tag I used to do a little tagging back you know <laughs> um, oh, of I might have tagged a few places on accident <laughs> You know, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, that's super cool. That's super cool. But you started with weddings. Is that how you started? Like officially with so, your business? Um, I actually started, I like jumped in when I jumped in to do this, like professionally full time. It was actually like real estate and corporate. Okay. Oh, wow. Real um, estate. So it was, a, it was a, lot, a lot more controlled. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then I slowly transitioned away. I actually come from three generations of wedding photographers and filmmakers. Wow. So oh, any, cool. I know. It's, so if anyone that is from my town like sees signs of Steingart photography and I go downtown and there's like a sign from 20 years ago that's still on the side of a convenience store. <gasps> what? That used to be my grandfather's studio and it says Steingart wow. photography. So, we need to come um, visit you, Colin. That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> So I knew it was a viable option and eventually like I had a, I have a cousin that's a great um, wedding photographer and he called me one day knowing that I do, I, I do video Yeah. and he's like, Hey Colin, I have a bride that wants um, a wedding video. I'm like, Oh, okay. I've been meaning to try it. It's like, it's tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my wow. gosh. I was like, uh, <laughs> sure. So we did it. Wow. Um, I had to, I had to call my friend that did um, wedding photography and filmmaking like full time and yeah. be like, what do I do? Yeah. yeah. He's like, do you have a lab? I was like, no, because I'm just doing real estate videos. <laughs> yeah. right? So he like walked me through like just, just some essentials. Um, may I swear on this podcast? You can do whatever you want. You okay. can do whatever you want. The day went okay, but the film was shit. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, to you. <laughs> yeah. But did the couple like it? Uh, I don't remember actually. <laughs> um, I think my my business partner at the time uh, had had the email conversations. But I was like, it was my first jump into it, mm-hmm. and um, it was really fun during the day. Of course, the product made me like so disappointed mm-hmm. that it actually like had this like little burning fire. And, and then the next film that I did, um, I went all out yeah. and it was so much better yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I mean you got to start somewhere and yeah, that's after course. like years and years of um, f- filmmaking experience it's still a that wedding, first wedding is crazy yeah. a wedding is yeah. so like on the go like you cannot you can't control it control anything you have anything. to be able to adapt it's yeah all I about adapting I think that's what people don't understand <clears throat> it is so different from anything it's else it's like you take all the knowledge you've learned 
and then apply it to all the different scenarios, yeah. you know, <laughs> that could on that possibly day. possibly happen. <laughs> and there are constantly <laughs> new ones coming up. Like every wedding, there's always something else, yeah. you know, yeah. which is, you know, I'm still, I'm well, still learning with that. But um, I don't think it's about the gear. No. Mm. But I definitely did not have the gear yeah. Okay, yeah. to even do that. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I was like shooting on a black magic at the time mm. and we shot raw for some reason. <laughs> we were just so not, we just didn't have the understanding yeah. and only had like a wide lens. Mm-hmm. But I mean, and, good for you for even saying yes one day before. I mean, even yeah. us like, see, I mean, like do weddings all the time. Just one day notice is still yeah, kind of like, day is uh, like one of those, oh, okay, hold on. You know, it's like one of those like, oh <laughs> man. Kind of Let super, alone your first one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh, Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> you're brave, man. <laughs> <laughs> so before weddings, what did you do? You said you had you left a corporate job last spring, last summer. Um, it would be it would be last spring. Yeah. Um. So 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually did photo video for them. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, and then that transitioned to a larger marketing role, and then it was a tech startup so basically like I did handled basically everything media related mm-hmm. um, and it was good at the time um, with with tech startups there's some sometimes some struggles financially and it was yes. it was kind of a, a bit of a whirlwind um, and then I would get pushed in, I kind of got pushed into more of a marketing role and then I did some front end design um, for their website and then I stopped it basically pulled me away from doing photo video um, with that company and then I kind of lost my love and I was just like i I need to I need to go for it. I need to pull the trigger and do this full time because I think over these last few years that I was working like part time doing video, I knew that my skill set was getting good enough that it, I actually could really jump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like talking to my mom one day. I was like, I need to do it. She was like, Then do it. Quit. Aww. I was like, Perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I think then it I, sounds so easy, right? <laughs> it's that easy. Um, we just quit and we just do it. That's awesome. It just like a. For, for some people, steady paycheck's great. Like for me, like this lifestyle that it's allowed me to live mm-hmm. is exactly what I wanted to cultivate in my life. And it was like, I need a job to fit around my lifestyle instead of the other way around. Right. Exactly. And I love that. the mm-hmm. kind of freedom that it allowed me to have and, and still does is exactly why that I do what I do. Of course, there's financial up and downs being a freelancer yeah. um, and yeah. running your own business. But um, that's something that um, it comes you kind of just take you take in stride yeah yeah, yeah it's awesome no, totally so you went how tell us how did you go from filming you know weddings to then working with Connor Carrick 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 I'm Connor sorry Carrick. Connor Carrick that's a mouthful <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, an NHL player how did that happen um so I probably at that point had two years under my belt in kind of the wedding industry i uh, mainly doing video um not full-time wedding video um because i was still splitting with other corporate stuff i've never had a crazy season of like 30 weddings that people talk about yeah Yeah. i'm kind of more in like the 10 to 15 which is good for me Mm -hmm. yeah well um by yourself but kind of like first off learning how to do make good stories Mm -hmm. starting with that corporate job all i did was um to sort of go back to it all i did was tell um stories about like farmers, it was an agri- agriculture company. Oh. So I made hmm. like short short films about the origin stories of farms. Oh, okay. Um, I know it sounds weird, but um, I so I like see show this. up, show up, never met the person, um, and talk to someone that's never been on camera before and learn how to be a good interviewer. Yeah, wow. do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And these people are just like farmers. They're like, I'm bringing in gear. They're like, what the heck is this? Yeah. <laughs> And through that process, doing like 15 or 20 of those, like I got really good. And then that's when I made the jump. Got it. And then we get into the weddings and it was learning how to run and gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like, that's that's like the biggest lesson I've taken away from weddings mm-hmm. is learning how to run and gun. So like I've had this skill set develop, especially on the go. And then when I had the opportunity to work with Connor... Um, the whole thing was run and gun. It like felt exactly like what a wedding day would be like because yeah. I lit- I literally just followed him the whole time. Um, but how did I get it? It actually started, he used to be a uh, Maple Leaf and I'm a big Leafs fan because I'm from Toronto and hockey's everything. <laughs> um, and I still am today. Like every podcast I listen to is usually like a hockey podcast. Um, and I noticed that he started putting out in, like content very intentionally. Mm-hmm. And I aligned a lot with his message, which was like, um, be consist- being consistent, like um, 
meet and greens, meaning like how he eats, how he prepares for the day. He talks openly about journaling and mental health awareness. Yeah. And I really like attached to his message. Mm-hmm. And I responded to like a, a, a couple posts in the comments and he like he would respond or you would respond to a story and he would respond back with something like nice, nice. and nothing, That's nothing awesome. elaborate. Yeah. So, so I knew that, I knew that he was approachable. So when the opportunity came for me to go to Chicago, um, to go hang out with Eric Floberg and shoot a wedding, uh, which is a whole another side story. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just, for some reason in that moment, I was like, I'm just going to DM him. Wow. So I busted out the phone. I busted out the phone, DM'd an NHL player yeah. and was yeah. like, Hey man. I'm going to Chicago That's awesome. from this day to this day. Um, I really respect your grind. Is there anything I can do to help support your social media efforts? Nice. And like he literally responded and within an hour. Oh my gosh. And was like, I have a photographer, but I, I don't have a video guy. Is that hey. something that you would want to do? Um, and he's like, yeah. And then from there stemmed a phone call. And we kind of like, I don't know what to say. We kind of hit it off. <laughs> and, no, I just, you can, re- like, with an hour phone call, you can really understand, like, someone's character. Yeah. And sure. I was like, this guy, this guy's good shit. Mm. And I really connected with him. And he's like, let's do it. And I pitched him on this idea for the documentary. And I had a couple different ideas, depending on what he wanted to do. Yeah. And he wanted to see if I was for real. And yeah. I showed up. And I all, it, that whole documentary was basically, shot in one day oh my gosh oh it was only one so day it was one day i show i i'm pretty sure i stayed at george's house from venture mm-hmm. um and i just met him at the rink at 9 a.m and we said hi how are you man good and he just started foam rolling and i just turned on the camera <laughs> and, and with it. next thing i know Dang. it's 11 p.m and i'm interviewing him at his house oh my gosh wow. it, I, like, it felt like it was like longer like you've been like documenting him yeah. for a while like yeah that's really yeah. cool that's the whole day. So he um, showed up to the rink. He trained outside because it was really humid. Then he, he got on the ice. I did some um, on-ice stuff with him for um, like 20 minutes before the rest of the NHL players came on. Now, do you ice um, skate? Do you know how to work yeah, around? Yeah, so I brought my skates. Oh, okay. I dr- Canada. doesn't mean he knows I d- how. They're born with <laughs> skates up there. <laughs> it's true. Come on. You know, it's, it's like us. We're um, down here in Florida, we're... It, it's true though. Like I never play or, or I never played organized hockey. Yeah. Just it's just I didn't have the opportunity to, because it's a, it's an expensive sport. Mm-hmm. But like I can skate absolutely fine. Okay. Like I can backwards. Um, so, were you on the rink like with your camera? Yeah. So we had about twenty minutes where we got on early before the rest of the NHL NHLers came on, and I put my skates on, and I had my camera. Yeah, I seen it. It was pretty. Um, the shots were pretty dope. I was like. I, He's yeah. probably on skates getting And I wish I wish I had more time and there's a couple clips that um I didn't get, but you just kinda kinda roll with yeah. it. And then on came on came the rest of his um NHL buddies that um live in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And they uh they practiced away. That's crazy. All because of a simple, kind Damn. DM that you sent with like zero expectations. I mean, how do you said no? I mean, like what? You lose nothing, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, that's fine. So it's, it, it feels like a stroke of luck, but um, I was pretty intentional and I gave them dates yeah. and I gave them a time. It's not like, hey man, can I just sec-? like if you're approaching a, a photographer, you're like, hey man, can I second shoot for you sometime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like maybe. Yeah. But it was like, no, I'm gonna be here from this day to this day. This is my idea. Are you down for it? Yeah. And he's like, but yeah. so you presented it in like a package like here's my ideas because like, then it just shows you like okay this dude's like serious, serious this dude's yeah. a pro like he knows what he's talking about yeah. he's like yeah mm-hmm. let's give him a chance and That's like so awesome. documentary super dope I love check that. it out I'm gonna tell everyone mm-hmm. we yeah. actually started off too sending a DM like for our first second shooting job yeah. like I just sent out a DM I was just like babe I mean we've never done a wedding before I was like never I mean What's What's the worst that can happen? You know, she says no. Oh, well. (laughs) She said yes. And I mean, like, since that day, we were like, oh, my gosh. We were hooked, though. Like, after that first wedding, we knew it was like, that's it for us. And, you know, like, for us, we even told her, we're like, we've never done this. Like, we expect nothing in return. But here's some of our photos that we have done. Yeah. And, I mean, what we gained, like, the experience and, like, just seeing her work like from the side was so much more valuable yeah. than anything she could have like paid us to do. Way you know, more, like yeah. it was so awesome. Yeah. So if anyone, if anyone's listening and wants to present, um, an opportunity to be a second shooter with 
someone that you like admire, yeah. Yeah. don't just be like, I would love this shoe for you. Like yeah. be really intentional about mm -hmm. it yeah. and really try to provide value. Um, and just at least get them on the phone so you can really like express yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. um, there's a way better connection. That's when you seal the deal. Yeah, there's sure. a better connection yeah. on the phone than through a DM, you know, like you can't see people, you can't hear people's intent you can't hear the you know inflection in their voice when they're like excited about yeah. hey man i would really love to come and yeah. i'm such a you know big fan you know like it's totally different yeah. than you know trying to text that out yeah you know but like, i mean were you intimidated a little bit sending that dm colin no no i just i don't know i just did it yeah, yeah. And he responded and i was like that's when i was like oh you, you freaked out a little <laughs> yeah um but i mean i didn't i didn't really get any like um I didn't get starstruck or anything like that. I don't know. We just like, he showed up and we just started working. That's awesome. Yeah. And you then you would talk, them? you just talk to me like casually about stuff. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, That's so cool. Do you want to tell them? So when we were, when we, so when we went to venture, remember they were looking for models. They, they did like shoot. a model call on remember, Instagram a couple of, like a week or two, but like three weeks, I think before. Three weeks before venture. Yeah. Remember they were like asking for a couple to, to, to shoot for one of their classes. Well, Christina actually, I was just like, yep, we'll do it. Just, I was just like messing around. I'm like, they're probably yeah. going to get like a thousand requests. I didn't even tell yeah. Jericho. I was at the hair salon getting my hair done and I'm just like, mm, why not? I'm just going to send this. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. I'm never going to meet this Boom. person. <laughs> yeah. Boom. She <laughs> replies in an email and I'm like, yeah. and you guys, uh, and you guys killed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're we, you're we, everyone's we, favorite couple. I was like, we've never modeled. We've never uh, modeled. We are not a modeling <laughs> type for soul. You know, just like all you you guys were so used to being behind the camera so being in front of the camera in front of 15 of other you people <laughs> you know and like mm. yeah it was it was but I it mean, was fun that was too like again that single dm that was like single DM. we got to meet you call we got to meet wine reverie like so many meet, amazing you know, people john ryan, bun, alyssa, ryan alyssa john bun you know, so many people them. and i mean it's just the the connection you create with people it's just there, you can't put any price tag on that. Like, no, I love you that. can't. I I remember Christine was so stoked that you were you had short hair. <laughs> she would just walk around. She's like, I love that she has short hair. See, and I thought I she's, was. She's like, and and we got like an Asian and a girl with short hair. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I, I I told Jericho after I sent it to him. He's like, What did you do? I was like, I mean, I have short hair. All the past venture girls had long, flowy yeah, hair. Yeah, so They're she not didn't think she was me. gonna get picked. You know, and yeah. I was like, you know, I mean, yeah. Plus, we're like interracial couple right yeah. it's like white person brown person yeah so like sure. i don't know no. you know i just when you see all those wedding films you always just see like the perfect the blonde you know hair. the perfect couple mm. so when they said hey would you guys like to come to venture we're like yes please you know we'll be there tomorrow yeah. you know like book the ticket and like it was a good time it yeah, was amazing it was time awesome. it was so fun we didn't venture leave. uh venture 2020 coming up in may i know, I know right are Excellent. you going no, not sponsored <laughs> not sponsored be. venture hit us up yeah. <laughs> um, hey. so let's kind of talk about that like what um so you sent him a DM, you went and recorded with him. What did that lead to? What other connections did that create for you? If what any. opportunities, friendships, mm -hmm. like what did that lead for you? Did you finally get to move out of your mom's basement? Like you said? No, yeah. <laughs> I'm still in my You're mom's still basement. There. And you know what? It's okay. Yeah. No, it's um, totally perfect. I wish I still lived in my mom's basement. Yeah. I don't have to pay for yeah. this. <laughs> and it's like, I'm approaching 30. Hey, I'm not, I'm not like, I know I look like a 14 year old boy, <laughs> but it takes, you got to like suck in some ego and be like, okay, I had to quit my job. I had to move home. My parents know I need to, I need to get some capital so that I can actually make a good next step in my life. So, um, I'm grateful for them and no, I have a great respect. relationship. So I'm, I'm kind of milking it. <laughs> Dude, if my um, son can live with me when he's 30, but he's doing his own thing, I will be a proud mom. Like having him that close. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so new connection. And, and that's, again, that's after trying to be the adult and like go after the corporate job and then yeah. realizing that like, that's not what life's at 20, about. I like 25, like, which is early. A lot of people, it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I can't do this. Like I can't, I can't sustain this. And mm -hmm. I, I learned really quick. Um, which is why I kind of doubled down. So, like, I don't feel like I'm late to the game. Yeah. No, there's um, no, but, there's no, um, there's no time. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's story's different. We're older than you, Colin. <laughs> yes. Everyone's story's different. So, back to your, <laughs> back to your question. Um, what did it lead to? I think the coolest, coolest part about it all was obviously I've developed a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Um, which has been really, really great. He's, he is a really good man. Um, really has everything in perspective. 
um, which he kind of talked about in the film that like his early NHL career, um, he stro- he, he's, it, it's, it was a struggle. Mm-hmm. It was a grind, like being in the press box and stuff like that and it challenged him to grow. So he's got a really good head on his shoulders, um, which was a great basis to our friendship, which has now led with us into what the, the new question was, is like, what can we do next? Mm-hmm. And yeah. presented more ideas because we enjoyed working together. Um, and now we are on the precipice, the precipice of starting, not starting, we've already started, um, a podcast of his own called Connor, Connor Carrick Podcast. Woo-hoo! Basically, basically a fusion between um, the hockey world and like wellness. Okay. And it's kind of a space that someone hasn't really jumped in. Most of the podcasts around hockey are literally just like hockey news. Yeah. Um, and by retired players or like media members. Yeah. And he, and I'm basically at the forefront of producing that, um, both like technically and um, everything that has to do with distribution. So, wow, that's um, so cool. In terms of other things, that it hasn't really led to much, but a lot of the people that have reached out to him about the podcast, mm-hmm. like it got shared by the NHL. Wow, it wasn't orig- It wasn't originally like it's not funded by the NHL. Yeah. We made it for him. Yeah. Um, so that was a big highlight being on NHL.com and on their, on their Instagram and stuff like that. But then you get like, I had like Cameron Haynes, which is Joe Rogan's buddy, like DM me saying that it was a great documentary. Like what? I was like, oh. <laughs> and he, he said he gets, he gets, um, he gets mess- messages about it still yeah. every week. And someone's That's like, whoa, crazy. this is crazy. Yeah. I did. A, okay. Totally side tangent. Yeah. I did something for an OHL team, which is an Ontario hockey team which is junior. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I was doing an interview like last week. It was like Lululemon and Peterborough Pete's. And um, one of the players is like, oh, I saw your documentary. I was like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was like, you're going to be in the NHL in like two years. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it was really great. And I was like, that's oh, so cool. That's awesome. A simple DM. Now you're making your way into the NHL. Yeah. Do you think you would like, would like to like venture off into that? space where you know like you have all those people who are always documenting like all the games because i watch a lot of basketball and i can only imagine i see all the c100s running you know running around everywhere like do you think you could you would be doing that like that would be cool to like see like highlights of connor on the ice or like one of his games (laughs) behind in the locker rooms you know so we're gonna try to do something like that it hasn't quite got to it yeah um, we had all these grand plans, and then he started the season, and it was just like, whoa. Yeah. It's yeah. Because they're busy. Yeah. Of course. They're so busy. Of course. And we kind of scaled it back to like just trying to knock out one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kind of, it, it seems like the podcast is the best, yeah. the best route. Because mm-hmm. um, that's, that's the kind of medium that's designed for him. Like he likes getting in deep conversations, talking about bigger subjects. Yeah. Yeah. And so, instead of doing like a vlog or something where I follow him mm-hmm. all the time. So. That's yeah. so cool. That what are some cool. topics that you guys? I don't want you to release too much, but we're like gonna, we're gonna go ahead and steal all these topics. Let me get a <laughs> no, pen. Like what's something write you guys have, Let's do it. have really talked about that like maybe surprised you that he wanted to talk about? Um, in the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I kind of knew because we were so open about like what we wanted, and for me, like the things that started changing my life were podcasts and books. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it just happens to be the same podcast and books that started changing his way of thinking. Mm. And it's like, for us, it's a, it's a, it's a big opportunity for us to kind of not give necessarily give back, but help try to bring people into that, um, different set of thinking, that personal development that may be missing in the hockey world mm-hmm. and beyond that, yeah. because it's kind of a fusion between two worlds. Um, so I knew right away, like what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And then we have lined up like different athletes and That's authors so cool. and doctors. Wow, okay. Doing doing a doctor on Wednesday. Um, some NHL players and stuff like that. And it's just kind of a fusion of different worlds. Um, but it won't be like hockey news podcasts. It won't be yeah, like yeah. that. No. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. And we've just noticed when we do new things like this podcast or like when we first started weddings, like we learned a lot about ourselves. Like obviously you learn a lot about the craft, like the gear that you need for like podcasting. I'm sure you had to do all that research, but then like we also realized like we have such a passion of just um, talking to people and, you know, just sharing their story and what they're currently doing in, in their lives and how like you can live such a happy life doing what you love to do and helping mm-hmm. others, you know, stay, being kind and generous and with your time, with everything. What has this whole venture with um, 
like done for you personally? What have you learned about yourself? Oh, one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and <God>. pause. <laughs> Let me do this. Okay. Had to record again. That way I know yep. to cut it there. Okay. Sorry, squad. It's okay. It's all good. Well, I'm shooting on 873 and I have 30-minute runtime. You need A6400. <laughs> I know. That'd be, it's that'd sweet. be nice for this. I got yeah. a nice little seven-inch screen what, right here. What have I learned? What right? have you learned about yeah, yourself? about yourself through doing... this whole experience with Connor. Ooh. Okay. Um, I feel mostly what I learned is that I can make some pretty cool stuff. I know that sounds weird, <laughs> but you're like, you, you, you're at home. You're thinking I'm a wedding, I'm a wedding filmmaker. That's kind of what I do. Yeah. Um, I kind of know exactly how to navigate my wedding films and a wedding day. Uh, yeah. And then do something completely different. Uh -huh. It's like, I've never made a documentary. Yeah. I've always wanted to. And I just kind of proved to myself that I am capable. Yeah. And that was big. It was a big confidence booster for me. Um, and all the people that messaged me saying that was unreal. And that was, um, it kind of felt good. So more of just kind of proof that, um, you know, I have the skill set to, to kind of make a difference and uh, make some really cool content. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was watching it, like all I could think was like, dang, this is so different from weddings. Yeah. And like all that kept going through my mind, like Jericho said, was like, how long did this take to film? Because like a wedding day is like eight hours and you get like a highlight reel that's like, yeah, five, seven minute. You know, this was like what, yeah. like a 12, 15 minute? It was 11.44. Oh, there 11 you go. So like about 12 minutes. So how long of shoot time did you have and how long did that take you to edit? So it was basically one day, minus the exception of like... um the next day he played a CPHL game, which is like a summer league. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just in the evening that I showed up and I got him on the ice, like playing a game, uh -huh. um, which didn't have like perfect context, but I just, it's like more B roll. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I used it at the end when he's reflecting. Yeah. So basically it was one day, it was 9am to, I probably left like 1130 PM. Um, wow. And I just followed him the whole process of the day, every step from lunch to getting like treatment to yeah. working out that's so um, crazy. To, to him signing a deal yeah, yeah. i was gonna talk about that that's, that's crazy that's not that wasn't improvised he le legitimately got the call go basically the night before and he signed the deal in the gym with wow. me beside him that's so wow. like he actually for anyone that hasn't watched it yet he actually called his dad mm -hmm. and yeah. um, talked about the deal and um, it was kind of really special. And then they had yeah. a celebratory dinner at night. That's and cool. I was just there for the ride. Yeah. So cool. I love it. Who came so up cool. with the idea of consistency? Because I feel like that that is mm -hmm. the key to a balanced lifestyle for us. Like people that don't it's, that don't have a nine to five, that don't have a predictable schedule. Like consistency is the balance. Like that's what people need. Like time management with some consistency. Yeah. You'll mm -hmm. be fine. <laughs> It, it was actually, a, it's a term that he's used over and over and over okay. in every single post. Mm -hmm. It's at the end of every post, it's hashtag consistency. Okay. And I was like, when I presented the idea and it was about his off season regimen, I was like, we have to call it consistency. Yeah. And he's like, okay, that's fine. Um, he's like, so down. Um, yeah. So it, it just made sense with his kind of narrative on social media. And uh, yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. loved it. It took, it took about 50 to 60 hours of editing wow oh, i don't man. know because i literally like just sat at my desk and pumped through it and the next thing i knew a week later it was a week later really like oh my gosh so, i think the only thing i did was go get groceries and like come back oh my gosh yeah cause, i <laughs> know because imagine cause it's like you know you have this huge project presented in front of you and you want to put out you want it to be the best you know and you want to get it down turned around fast so when did you shoot this actually Last uh, August. This past oh, August. This yeah. past August. Okay. That's like, no. July. July. Okay. Summertime. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was only July. released like what a couple weeks ago. No. No, it's been. No, it's been up. It's been up for a while. Was it? It actually took like it actually like took like two months for it to go whoop, and then everyone started noticing for some reason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but did you post it like in July, or August? It, I definitely posted it in August. Oh really? No, I yeah. saw it. 
I remember telling yeah, you I that. Guess it, it I guess time just went by that fast. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel it, like it needed to, it needed to be relevant because it's about the off season. So yeah. I was like, it has to be launched before the season starts. Yeah. And he hits camp. He hits camp September first. Okay. And I love how it like I know nothing about hockey. Not gonna lie, never watched a game. Never been to a game. Not my yeah. not my forte. It's not big. But in I was hooked because it had a story. It wasn't just like a mm-hmm. documentary about a hockey player. Like it was like him, his life, and it just had that personal touch that you're so good with like implementing into your wedding videos, which I have seen and I've been following. So when I saw Thank it, you. I was like, oh my gosh, like. I, this is the first hockey thing I've ever watched. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like yeah. this is, it's crazy how it, it just intrigues you. I'm like, I want more. Like, I want to see what else he's doing. Like, where is he at now? Mm-hmm. Colin, we need more. Yeah. When's, <laughs> it, working when's on the it? next documentary, man? I need to know. I don't know. When's How's your feature doing? coming on Netflix? We need, you know. I have some ideas. You know, that's so <laughs> cool. So you started with the, with the farms? <laughs> Sorry, I want to see one of those. Too. Yeah, I want to see one of those. You need to, you need to send me one of those. Like, I, I need can. to see. They're not that bad, still. Yeah. Well, I, um, I would imagine. I was like, there's no way he just like went from a wedding to shooting this this documentary. Now it totally makes sense. Where you used to do interviews before, because I was like, this is totally yeah. not like yeah, Colin, wedding style. Colin's the kind of guy that you can just chat with. Like that's what I feel. like at Venture. I was just like, this guy looks so nice. Like yeah. you're so you're smiling, but he also looks like friendly. 19. Yeah, when I like, first <laughs> met him, I thought he was 19 years old. Like, look at I this am young kid. 30. Yeah, <laughs> this young uh, kid killing it over I here. Was like, what is this 19 yeah. year old doing at Venture? You know, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> that's so cool. I know, man. So I know you were um, talking about marketing. How do you market? as of right now you said you do targeting ads oh, yeah like, it's because um a lot of people at venture um that i got close to i would i told them that i had engagement shoots after venture and they're like what i'm like yeah like i got like three engagement shoots lined up like two here we're going to loveland pass blah 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 and they're like what yeah i yeah, remember yeah, i remember, I remember. You saying that and you did yeah. a shoot for um what's his name um him and his matt. wife for matt, matt and his Siegel, wife right right yeah. He used to have long hair. Yeah. Matt Siegel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. His short hair looks I like a 16-year-old. I was like, this guy, no time off. Like, everybody's out trying to explore Colorado. You're like, who's Con's next? Like, Who wants a photo no, shoot? We need to do he's it. like, he came up to us. He's like, when you guys fly out, let's do a photo shoot. <laughs> 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 I was like, dang. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like, I, I knew. So it was kind of intentional because I knew I wanted to grow my international portfolio. Yeah. Because I live in Ontario, which is basically like. Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> it's like if Florida wasn't warm. Ooh. There's no, there's nothing. Yeah. Um, if you go northern Ontario, it's really beautiful. You get into Muskoka. If there's any Ontario people listening, then they know that. But I'm in southern Ontario, and it's kind of flat and boring. So I was like, I want some scenery. Mm-hmm. and Oh, yeah. Colorado's definitely I, got that. Yeah. So I designed a, a Facebook marketing um, little campaign targeted only to people in Denver and Colorado Springs. God, wow. um, I think I spent time. 20, I think I spent 25 bucks, and 25 you booked, bucks. You booked how many? I booked three. Wow. So, so I spent 25 bucks and I found, um, I mean, it was lucrative. I literally said free and yeah. here we're talking about free again. Yeah. Um, and then I just presented them with print options and I made some money back. Um, but at the point, at that time I was like, okay, I've spent like two years doing wedding films. I want to try photography. Like I know I'm I'm good at it, but I've never done it. Let me get some um, additional like portfolio pieces mm-hmm. in the most beautiful place. Um, so you in never my you never really took photos before Denver. Not like not profe- like necessarily professional. Like I've done family shoots. I've been taking photos for a long time. But you've never um, done like engagement, random strangers. Yeah. It and when you like come from spending how many weddings, like you're so comfortable with weddings. Yeah, yeah. It's course. like, it's like if you're a photographer and you're thinking about doing video, yeah. it's scary cause you're doing video, but you know exactly how weddings are going to go. And you're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, all so, the behind the scenes. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I basically spent the whole day with each couple and we hit multiple spots. And the way I kind of set it up is throw the locals, like drive me and them around to the spots. That's cool. And I'll take your photos. Wow. Hey. So I kind of got to explore different areas too. Um, which was really cool and including going to um, Estes Park or Rocky Mountain National Park. Wow. Yeah, yeah so we we're in Rocky, Na- Rocky Mountain National Park um, and yeah, the, the weather would move 
so quickly that it would be snowing, but the sun would be like golden hour. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and I got some of like the craziest photos I've ever got. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. And basically like, um, we re- we return. I'd get in my rental car, go back to my Airbnb, and I was like, "Now I have international portfolio pieces." And That's awesome. They're still on my website as a big part of it. Have you booked any? I have a, cu- I have a cu- wedding photo gigs from those. One, one of the, one of those led to an actual book wow. out, um, in Colorado. Back in Colorado. Um, yeah. That's cool. I love yeah. that. See, like, Dang. I feel like so many people that just start off in our industry, like of weddings, especially, well, that's just what I know. They have that mentality of like, oh, how much are you going to pay me? Like, it's all about like money first. And mm-hmm. like Jericho and I, like we always said, like, you don't chase the money. Like there's so much more good that comes from like providing value to other people, you know, especially in the beginning, like when you don't have that experience, like you just need to yeah. be like, Hey, I got a camera. You need photos. Like, let's, I'm willing let's to do learn this. if yeah. you're willing to give me a chance. Exactly. You know, like, let's go make this happen. Exactly. Like and what it you leads did. to so many great opportunities, you know, just being humble and being kind and yeah. offering that generosity to somebody else. And people are always mm-hmm. like stunned. They're like, what for free? Because like, nah. like you, yeah. like, <laughs> it leads to something larger. Yeah. Like had you not, you know, offered your services to Connor, you know, you would still be yeah. at home or with like Eric trying to figure things out, you know, but now you're going places so from cool. doing a simple, you know, service. You just- I never thought I would like start pushing into sports media. Right. I mean, now that I, now that I think about it, like it makes sense. Yeah. But like that, I kind of push into that in addition to weddings. I'm still shooting weddings. Um, yeah. Probably like back in, yeah, like, in May, but, you probably didn't think you'd be doing anything sports hockey related. Did you? No, like, it wasn't even like in, in your like five yeah. year plan. We you know, were, we, we like always all... make these plans. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a five year plan. I'm like three months at a time. One day at a time. And I think that's, um, you know, that's it for us too. I mean, we, we would like to think we have a five year plan, but, but it's like, it changes daily for me. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Like I'm, oh, I'm the one that's always like, oh, I'm going to do this. But then it like flips, you know, like this podcast mm. thing. I, like I would have never thought, you know, like I am. This, gr- this is a great idea, know? though. Yeah. Podcast. I I, li- I, s- I was sitting on the couch one night. I remember ten thirty, and I was like, I was like, it was like Forrest Gump. I'm gonna start a podcast, and, and like, next day I ordered question, everything. I was like, what am I gonna talk about? He's like, we'll figure it out. I'm like. Okay. Yep. And next thing I know, he's like, Christina, we need questions. We need people. I'm like, oh, okay. Now it's not yep. all on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Christina brings that, you Love know. That. But I get it yeah. going. And then Christina will just, you know, add make her little happen. thing, make it happen. <laughs> and then, you know, she comes up with all these great questions because she's, as she, I just love well. talking to people and like when I talk mm-hmm. to people I have questions like Jericho's more of like oh like a good listener and I like I'm just listen. like I want to know more like how did this happen for you yeah. like I'm just I'm not jealous but I'm just like I'm so happy like for you personally because I know like like you said like that wasn't in your sights and I just love how life happens like that like and then just, just yeah, go everything, just everything, everything like changes and you're just like whoa yeah. this is like clarity like this is what I love so, doing so in like three months yeah. or we'll say six months we'll have you back on the podcast like, what are you like, doing now? Oh, yeah, we just got sure. back from, you know, overseas, you know. We just got done all that. No. <laughs> Switching over to, like, things happen, things happen slow. interviewing no, LeBron, they don't. you know, with basketball. LeBron's going to hit you up. He's like, hey, I want one of those. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey. I'm going to stay in hockey right now. Put yourself out there if you want to do something, especially if it's not in your line of work or your, your kind of normal scope of work, offer to do it for free. If it's something that is in your normal scope of work, Probably don't do it for free. Yeah. Because you got to eat. Yeah, for sure. You got to eat. Yes. There needs to be that balance. But, yeah. I love that. I was going to ask you that. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you want our listeners to know? Or like, what what's some words of wisdom from Colin that we need to all uh, hear uh, but right I now? I want to do my rapid be- fire. I got this is a big, this is a big question. Yeah. yeah. I, I told you to give yeah, me a big I question. Yeah, you, you asked for it. And Derek was like, you want to ask him? I'm like, nope. He said whatever. So <laughs> I know this is going to sound super cliche, but it's just a part of it. Like, if you're in the grind, just know that you'll make it out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's good. Yeah. Like stick, stick to it. Mm-hmm. If this is what you want to do, then, then, then stay, stay steady on the rudder. To use sure. a hockey analogy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because it's like, it hasn't, it's, it's been tough. Like my early twenties were, were hard, mm-hmm. like financially, like relationships, like trying to navigate, navigate early life. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing I knew is I didn't want to live a life that didn't serve me. Yeah. yeah and didn't serve the kind of life I wanted to build. And I've kind of had that in perspective. And for some people, like the stability of working a normal job is important to them. Mm -hmm. And that's, I totally respect that. For me, 
it was, I need to feel creatively fulfilled and I need to be like really excited about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And, and of, of course this work has allowed me to kind of do that and pursue different things that really perk my interest and say no to things that don't. Yeah. And it's cool because you can evolve in this industry with the kind of the core skill set. So like if you're going through it and you're learning and you're early in the process, just stay with it. Ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Like the more you start to learn, the more you realize you don't know, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, For and, sure. and just, just be, be a humble servant and, and be a sponge and just take it in I and love that. realize that you, you, you don't know everything, but, um, you're also got skill set and and worth too. I don't know. Yeah, always there you go. Always there you growing, go. never settling for just like, okay, I'm good, you know, but like always <laughs> having that like, hey, I can learn from this person, you know, not necessarily do exactly what they're doing, but like really want to like, okay, let me see how th they're doing this. Yeah. No matter like where you're at in journey in your life, you know, whether they're ahead of us mm -hmm. or before us. I mean, I always find that I can learn something from anyone. Yeah, and like when you start out at first, especially with like us with weddings, we're like, okay, we did three weddings this year. There's people, like you said, talking about like 30 weddings and like you kind of get that like, okay, where is this going? Yeah. Is this yeah. gonna work? Is this gonna happen? Yeah, like, and you said you wanna you want to interview me and I was like, wait, like I'm like <laughs> no. a, gr a grown ass adult <laughs> in his parents' basement. <laughs> with like, I was like, I don't even have very many weddings booked next year. <laughs> But I was like, what do you, what do you want to, <laughs> and then I realized it's like, it's okay. It's okay to be in the grind. Yeah. Um, and that's what we And want. I'm not even like grinding. I'm enjoying it. I actually have left so much space open. Mm -hmm. If this makes any sense. So much space open in my life to allow these different opportunities. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, how many weddings do I want to book? I yeah. don't know how much stuff's going to happen with the NHL. Like, is it, what if this podcast starts taking yeah. off? Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So you kind of have to leave your open space for that too. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a what happy we life is so much more important than like constant bookings because then you're just like constantly like just working to work and just like you said you're not actually living your life you know mm -hmm. and that's what we wanted for the podcast though it's not necessarily like people who are like doing Made it 50 or like, 100 yeah. you know a thousand weddings a year we just want people to be true and like just tell their story and to like yeah inspire other people that are yeah. like thinking like i'm the only one like this like i'm the only one that hasn't booked a wedding next mm -hmm. year there's somebody out there that's thinking like man i want to shoot weddings you know but they haven't made that jump yet you know like they're struggling they they're, they do you know the corporate job nine to five but then on weekends you know they're shooting weddings and like man i would just want to shoot weddings for the rest of my life yeah. and you know and you did it and now that led you know to so many other opportunities but you know mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's awesome though. No matter no matter where you're at in your in your journey, you know, I think we're gonna have you on the podcast anyways. Yeah. You know. It's important to like well, thank you. realize where you are in life yeah. too. And you know, live that and just be happy and content with like what you currently have and not always wishing like, Oh, I wish I had this. Like I and people people always say overnight success, but they didn't see the ten years yeah, before. No. Yeah, right? there's no Never. such it's thing. Always like that. Yeah. No such thing. As so that's why we're glad success. we're documenting this now. Like, hey, look at Colin. You know, <laughs> back in we knew 2019, him back then. and now look at him. <laughs> we know him. He, he doesn't even reply to my DMs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I will always. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, dang, I remember when he used to like hit me up and like, be like, Colin, remember when the NHL player responded yeah. to you? Where are you at? <laughs> you <laughs> forgot about WOG. <laughs> I'm the most approachable person. If anyone has any you questions are. about anything, oh, no, please totally. reach out. Yeah, totally. totally. All right. I, will, I don't think I'll ever lose that. No. That's good. So. I no, love you that shouldn't. about you. You shouldn't. All right, I got a couple rapid fire questions because I love. Okay, I lo let's I love go. These rapid things. fire. Rapid fire. W O J. Okay. Starbucks or Tim Hortons? I'm um, Timmy's. Yeah, oh. Timmy's. It's a Canadian nah, yeah. thing, right? Cool. Yeah, you got to rip down and get a double double. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> do you guys know what a double double is? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is that? We don't have Tim what Hortons. What about a four by here? four? What? Or a four by four? No, Wayne Gretzky. Oh, no. yeah, I know Wayne Gretzky, but I don't know like I don't know a lot of hockey stuff. A, a double double is the most standard drink you'll get in Canada, and it's two milk or two cream, two sugar. Oh. So, uh. Hi, can I get? Oh, well, hey, can I get a medium double double? <laughs> Got just, it. All right, next time we're up north, we're totally doing Tim Hortons. We don't I have Tim Hortons. Also, American Tim Hortons has different coffee. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, we've been to the American so, one. We've been to the American one in Pennsylvania. I don't know how close it is. Okay, so city life or like small town life. 
small town. I live, I have 40 chickens <gasps> and I go outside and, um, walk in the trails every day. Oh my gosh. 40 chickens. We need to come visit you. Yeah. Kai That's would love like that. dream life right there. All right. So, uh, yeah. favorite movie of all time. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> movie. Movie. I don't know. That's a hard one. Yeah. Can we go like favorite movie recently? Because sure. I don't know all time. Sure, recently. You can do recently. Or if you want to do this year. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like Blade Runner. Blade Runner? The new one. Okay. Um. Or, I don't know. Let's just go with Blade Runner. Kay. Blade Runner? This is hard. I do watch a lot of movies, but. Okay. Okay, Instagram uh, or Facebook? Uh, um, IG for sure. Yeah. And then, yeah. what about. Sorry, I'm not rapping enough. Let's go. <laughs> what about um favorite favorite book um <laughs> yeah i'm kind of a health nut um any anything from dr mark hyman okay we'll have to look i know that, that sounds super lame but he's the best he like single-handedly changed my life but. okay right. hard taco or soft taco um lettuce taco Oof. okay lettuce taco <laughs> that sounds weird I, I was hoping you'd ask food ones because I'll have the weirdest. Is, there, is that a Canadian thing too? Like no, a it's just like I I eat very specific. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Coke or Pepsi? I don't drink pop. Oh, pop. Oh, pop. Pop. I. It's pop. I don't think I've had a soda. Soda. In. <laughs> in forever. I don't think I've had. I don't think I've had a soda in more than five years. Oh wow, good for you. Okay, laptop or desktop desktop okay i'm laptoping right now on my girlfriend's macbook okay superman or batman batman for sure okay what three words describe you Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hardest one this um, is rapid fire can that? i do like single words yeah three single yeah, words three single words quirky quirky fun fun uh, sincere. Sincere. Okay. Got I it. like those. Um, so what is the best advice like anyone's ever given you? These are deep questions. Dude, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm taking it that podcast to the next level. Colin can go deep. I'm, o- I'm okay with that. Um, I can't, nothing's really coming to my mind. <laughs> it's hard when you're on the podcast. Cause you, cause usually when you have a question like that, no, it's like not even that I'm uncomfortable or anything. It's like usually something that has to be recent yeah yeah um and you're like oh yeah yeah this this popped into my brain do you have anything babe um for me yeah it's not my interview okay but i'm asking you (laughs) (laughs) no honestly it's just more so because i listen like the gary v podcast every morning and it's just like a lot of his reiteration of like why i'm doing what i'm doing you know live simply you know just put in the work you know no create complaints. content no complaining that's one of my biggest thing it's like no excuses I, yeah, yeah. And it, unfortunately for my son Kai <laughs> I live by the no excuses you know policy mm-hmm. it's either I want to do it or I don't you know it's black and white with me it's like I don't make mm-hmm. excuses if I want to do it I'm going to do it if I don't want to do it then I don't do it it's not like oh maybe I'm going to do it yeah. or maybe I'll get to it there's just no excuses for me. And like, unfortunately, Kai has to live up to that too. Cause he's, he tries to pull excuses up, like all the he's time. He's seven. Okay. He's seven. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I'm like, sorry, Kai. Um, that's not an excuse. It's either you want to do it or you don't want to do it. And yeah, I think that's, that's how it is for me. It's like, if I don't feel like doing it, then I really don't do it. You mm-hmm. know, it just comes with, that's how it is. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think, Okay, I didn't know how to word it, but something that popped in that that always resonated with me is like, people are going nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that idea is like, people are so frantically going at what they want. They, it it, direction matters more than speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, So they could try to go all in at something, and that kind of just makes me think about kind of what I what I've touched on before is just being steady. Um, uh, to your to your big goals and not just like short term goals and mean like I want to make this much money like big goals yeah, yeah. Like, what kind of life do you want to live yeah so like what kind of legacy um, do you want to leave behind like what do you want people to remember you as you know yeah a lot a lot of people go nowhere fast yeah it's yeah. good um, it's deep and that's not advice I'm I'm more of a quote guy than I am like a 
I don't really have anyone that like gives me business yeah, advice yeah. or anything like that. I know, we got to figure it out. On um, our own. If, if if anyone wants to mentor me, let me know. Hey. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of a hot mess, <laughs> but I got I got I got some raw talent. I think. <laughs> so of all the places you've been calling this year, specifically 2019, where did you make the biggest, <clears throat> most memorable memories this year? It has to be Chicago. Chicago. Just combination um, of working with Eric Floberg and doing the Yeah, NH- that was just a crazy week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, you did that all in one week. The yeah, workshop? Yeah, like I... No, he... Sh- yeah, I went down. Um, I slept at his house. We actually filmed him running because he's doing a, um, a documentary on a marathon, um, the marathon he was running. Mm-hmm. We woke up the next morning at f- like 4.30 a.m. to do a sunrise shoot. Yep, I might saw been, that. Might have been early. You so were already like recording him at 4.30 because he was like, it's 4.30. And, and me and him at that point have only had a few conversations and yeah. he can like get, get adjust. He understood my character. Mm-hmm. But at that point, like I just drove 12 hours straight oh and I arrived at like 8 p.m. I also accidentally went to a Whole Foods in the in like the most ghetto part of Chicago <laughs> and he texts me and he's like, get out of there. <laughs> I feel like and I was like, and I'm just like a, just a little kid from like yeah. a small town. I was like, <laughs> is this dangerous? <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> you obviously don't I? watch um, the news. And the next morning we went and we did um, a sunrise shoot at like 5 a.m. Um, he just posted that wedding film if anyone wants to it watch it. It was a wedding, Eric not Flaubert. just a shoot. Oh, it was a yeah, it was a wedding. Yeah, I did behind the scenes so we for a future YouTube video, which I don't think he's put out. Um, and I also like half shot the wedding too. So it's kind of both. Um, and then basically like that was a two day wedding. And then the day after that, I met Connor and we did that. And then I finished that with Connor and then went, went back to Eric's. And the next day we flew to Manhattan wow. um, because he's like, you ever been in New York? And I was like, no. <laughs> he's like, do you want to? I was like, what? Yeah, I was like, I drove here. Yeah. He's like, oh, we'll just, we'll just book a flight. And next morning like we booked a flight and we were in manhattan for like 20 hours oh my gosh how oh. was it you liked it um that big cities are weird big city but, yeah um, New York is, yeah it, it was cool i feel bad eric if you're listening i was really tired <laughs> <It> was just, <laughs> everything was catching up to me and i like remember sleeping and he's like let's go we're in new york i was like <laughs> but yeah. um but it was exciting and um i learned a lot other than that i went to the adirondacks in new york to do a hiking trip mm-hmm. with my lady, and that was that was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Um, I, everything, every, every travel, every trip this year, Denver was yeah. unreal. Yeah, I like what you just said that you didn't even know it was a big deal. Like we went to Denver too for venture, just thinking we're gonna learn. Like we went there, you know, like sponges basically. Like we're just starting video because we've been we were doing photo first, adding video. Mm-hmm. So we're like we're just gonna be like sponges. We're splitting up, taking all the classes. But what we didn't realize was the friendships and connections that would that we would make and how that would have been yeah. the biggest takeaway from venture versus all the education and all the I mean, the, uh, the speakers were all amazing, obviously, but like being able to be in room with a room full of creative that creatives that like were like minded and mm-hmm. we're not like, oh, I'm not sharing my secrets or like everybody was just so open about everything. It was just so just like heartwarming. I don't know what else to say. Like it was just such a like pleasant time being around so many cool people and meeting people. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah. I mean, I think that was the atmosphere yeah. was just unreal mm-hmm. with all the <laughs> amount of people just willing to help each other. And like I said, we were I told Ryan and Alyssa, you know, we were sheep or we were wolf in sheep's clothing because yeah. we were wedding photographers posing you know trying to like blend in oh yeah we shoot wedding films too you know like, yeah you know like, yeah, yeah. we know exactly i mean i i've done it but not as much as like everyone else in the room mm-hmm. and like you said it doesn't matter where you're at in your journey man it's just about just showing up and yeah. putting in the work having that you know? willingness you know yeah like we didn't know like they would lead yeah. us to where we're at today yep so community was definitely the biggest takeaway yeah. for me yeah. for for venture. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, when you get to a certain point in your kind of wedding filmmaking career, you kind of have an understanding. So there's like a lot of stuff that was kind of that you kind of knew already mm-hmm. in some of the in my position in some yeah. of the the um, seminars. But it was just, it was just connecting. Like, yeah. I mean, like 
who is Matt Johnson and I'll mess it, like message me back if I message him. Like that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now or, I have a friendship with Eric. For sure. Yeah. Right? Or like John but if Bunn. I didn't, if, if I didn't have that friendship with Eric, I wouldn't have gone to Chicago yep. and then I wouldn't have messaged Connor yeah. and then now I wouldn't have this job. See? It's just like, yeah, yeah. it's all so it's connected. It's funny how things you know, kind of just snowball. And then right? like as business owners, small business owners, like understanding how important network is, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, a lot of us are introverts. I personally am not. Jericho was at first. Yeah. I mean, um, it takes me a while to warm up to people. Me, me too. But like understanding how important that is and sometimes having to put yourself out there and being like, okay, I am so afraid, but I'm going to go. I'm going to be the most chatty person there and just like meet everyone that I can just mm-hmm. because like that's what life is about. Like when it all comes down to it, like it's people that matter, um, you know, and we're always talking about that, how like no matter what we're doing, you know, serving people and making other people's lives better is the goal personally for me. Like if I can impact somebody's life and make them smile, like it's, it's a good day, you know, like yeah, the, po- the podcast should help with that. I we hope, hope so. I mean, <laughs> right? Cause this is totally out of our norm too. Like we are not, I'm not a talkative person like that, but the podcast is like making me, cause it's so interesting to have like so many different people on and just, yeah find out about their stories because like we do this every day you know but it's like why not record it and share it with everyone like so they can hear like all our cool stories and just show that when you just put in the work yeah and we're all places we're all the same people people, you know like Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, there's nothing different between me and you Colin I mean you know how to ice skate I don't know how to do that. I, mean, cool I, I, could probably, accent. I could probably figure it out, but you know, like, hey, I know how to ice skate. You know, if I put in the work. I'm Russian. But thank you for chatting with us, um, spending some time. I know you got a lot going thank on. You. No, I don't. We're super no. grateful. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even gonna fight. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing and encouraging our listeners to just to just do it. You know, like not to like take what Nike says, but sometimes like that's all it takes is just sending that DM, that video, whatever it is, whatever you're trying to do. Just just go ahead and just do it. Like stop putting it off. Yeah. It, there's nothing really that you can lose if if you do. You know, yeah. you can only gain something from it. Basically. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me on. Um, I'm a big fan of you guys. So it's humbled you. that. You brought me on to kind of share a little bit of my story. Yeah, so I hope I was an okay um, guest. That was perfect. Um, and I look forward to the to the next one. Yeah. yeah we'll we're excited. In a couple on. months, we'll have you back on. Yeah. Let's see where you've gone. And yeah. thank you, everyone, for listening. We hope to catch you on the next one. Bye. See Bye. See ya. Subscribe to <laughs> WOJ. Leave the comments. The WOJ experience on Spotify, <laughs> YouTube, and everywhere that you can stream podcast.